All right, we're back and to kick off our broadcast here today from Oracle Cloud World Tour Dubai 2025, we are with Greg Pavlik, Executive Vice President of Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, Data and AI. Greg, thank you so much for being here with it's us. Great to be here. It's exciting to be in Dubai. This is my first time. This is my second time. Oh, so okay, I'm cool. A, not, not quite a neophyte, but it's great. Yeah, it's it, been it's been awesome. Now, um, you came off the keynote stage earlier. Can you, for anybody who may have missed it, can you give us just just a brief recap of your top message today? Yeah, I think we want to make sure that everybody understands that OCI is changing the dynamics of the cloud industry. Mm -hmm. We're focused obviously on scale, but when we think about scale, it's not just large regions, it's ubiquitous presence globally. The other thing we've focused a lot on is modularity, mm -hmm. right? So we're in the position where we came into the cloud game as, with a second mover advantage to kind of think about how to build the cloud so that it could be distributed differently than other hyperscalers. Right. And we've created something called a dedicated region, which we are now able to shrink down into a very small footprint of only three racks. And that's really deployable in anyone's data center anywhere in the globe. The third thing is AI. Yeah. Uh, we want to make sure everybody understands that our AI strategy is differentiated. It's focused on enterprise and governments, and it's focused on supporting sovereign needs of regions like the UAE. Right, okay, so we're going to hit on all of that. Um, but first I want to talk about scale. I understand why customers would want to scale up and scale out, but let's talk about scaling down with dedicated mm -hmm. region. Tell us a little bit more about that and the benefits. Well, there's lots of reasons you'd want a dedicated region. So. Uh, many cases, you've got sensitive data uh, that's within your data center, and it's just not feasible to bring it out of the data center into the cloud. We're able to bring the cloud to the data, Okay. right? That's number one. Number two, uh, we have regulatory uh, restrictions in a lot of markets, uh, and in order to serve those markets, um, in many times, the regulators just won't allow applications or deployments into the public cloud. Mm -hmm. Dedicated region solves that problem. You get the full power of the cloud, all of our services, 100% of OCI, delivered into a private data center. So you get complete control uh, for all the privacy, all the data sovereignty, and all the dimensions around security that come up in a lot of these regulatory environments. So let's actually talk about that as an example here in the UAE. Um, mm -hmm. What are you hearing from customers about the benefits they're going to achieve with this? I think uh, UAE has been a really uh, strong region for dedicated regions. Mm -hmm. uh, data sovereignty is a big theme, regulatory compliance, uh, and just control of the infrastructure. Um, it's not just data, it's also applications. So a lot of times, uh, go into a telco, for example, they have a lot of application infrastructure and they want the cloud to be close to their investments. Right. We solve that problem for them. We allow them to bring the cloud into their world and control the cloud, and in the case of the alloy, configuration, which we are allowing them to actually operate it themselves if they choose to. Right. Um, okay, you also mentioned uh, another big topic, a conversation being multi-cloud. Um, let's talk about that. That's in, you know, we, we would call that scaling out um, as we talk about mm -hmm. scale here. Um, first question is, I just want to take this kind of high level. A lot of people are like, what is multi-cloud? Because they haven't, it's kind of, they haven't really heard it. that phrasing, right? So yep. what is multi-cloud and what are the benefits of multi-cloud? So, so multi-cloud is just the reality of where the industry is at. If you go back eight, 10 years, you talk to a customer, a large customer, and they say, hey, I'm going to make a, a strategic cloud selection. It's the only cloud I'm going to use. Um, once people got into the reality of doing cloud deployments and having to deal with uh, considerations around the, the differentiated capabilities in clouds, different kinds of applications that were available, all that went out the window. Right. So you never really see a customer anymore who's using only one cloud. Right. Usually it's two, three, four clouds that are a part of their strategic portfolio. Mm -hmm. What we've done with multi-cloud is said, yeah, uh, we recognize that's reality and rather than make it hard to use the clouds together, our investment strategy is to make it really easy to use them together. Yeah. Go from walled gardens to give you kind of a seamless connective tissue so you can use the best of OCI together with Azure, together with Amazon, together with Google. So, so you just named our current multi-cloud partnerships. Mm -hmm. um, what does the future look like for multi-cloud with Oracle? Well, I think we've launched uh, the OCI data services uh, in these uh, inside the other hyperscaler clouds. You can mm -hmm. use them, you know, seamlessly as as if they were native to each of those cloud providers. Uh, I think we're going to see a big push into global deployments, and then we'll probably diversify into a broader range of services and capabilities, so you can get OCI increasingly anywhere. 
exciting, very exciting for our customers. And we've been hearing a lot about that. Um, let's get into AI infrastructure again. That was kind of your yep. third, your third big point there. Um, what is our enterprise AI strategy? So I think the, the, the key term you use there is enterprise AI. Yes. Uh, and really what makes us different uh, than everyone else in the industry is we are focused on bringing the latest and greatest of generative AI and making it viable for the enterprise. Because if you think about it, this technology was built for social media, it was built for search applications, very, very different. These are all legit, very good businesses, right. but very different than the enterprise or government context. Right. So where Oracle's really focused on is at every layer of the stack, really, uh, adapting and growing this AI ecosystem so that it works well in the enterprise. Um, now, our key differentiator there, in my opinion, is the fact that we've got the world's largest SaaS portfolio running on top of OCI. We're plumbing generative AI into all those applications. And that pressure of just, hey, th this, these scenarios need to work, they need to work consistently, they need to be effective, for all these patterns and workflows that are more typical of what you see in the enterprise is kind of the, I would say, the secret sauce that we kind of bring to the table that we can start to change the game in terms of how generative AI works for businesses. That, gosh, it's like you know these questions that I was going to ask. That's what I do every day. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, but it's also, you know, it is, I think, the thing that makes us unique and different and super valuable for our partners and customers. Truly, truly. Now, I want to talk a little bit about our partnership with NVIDIA. Um, anyone can buy GPUs from NVIDIA, but what mm -hmm. is our mm -hmm. differentiator advantage there? Yeah, I think when you hear people talk about buying GPUs, um, the truth is you never just buy a GPU or you never buy sets of GPUs. You have to have them in a uh, configuration where there's an ultra low latency uh, cluster with all the network interconnect and all the high volume, high throughput file system optimizations that are required to run these kind of generative AI workloads. Um, so yes, GPUs are the center of the equation, and then they're you know, table stakes to process uh, the, all the training data for the models. Um, but it's really the combination of the GPUs, um, the ultra low latency networking work that we've been doing for the last 20 years mm -hmm. uh, and optimizations that we've been doing also at the file system level. And those, um, optim the, the network work that we've done goes all the way back to our early Exadata days, early right. uh, distributed and parallel database investments. One of the reasons we're so differentiated in this space is we've been doing it in a focused way for so long. Do you have any examples of um, a customer using the, these innovations um, and this technology to really drive their own AI innovations? Um, well, uh, in Cloud World last year, uh, we talked about the fact that Grok 2 from XAI was mm -hmm. built on top of OCI. Right. Um, and even yesterday, uh, Larry Ellison was at the White House talking about the partnership that we're developing with OpenAI. Right. Uh, and the reason these partnerships are coming together is because we have this supercluster capability that takes the GPUs, but it adds all this other necessary elements to build a platform that really is becoming kind of a the, the standard approach to how you do generative AI training in the industry. Scaling up. That's scaling the, up. We, we did scaling down, yep. scaling up, yep. scaling up. Very, very large clusters. Yes, very large. Yes. Um, okay, final question, kind of topic area here. Um, we're building hundreds of data centers around the world. Um, why are we doing that and how will that benefit our customers, for example, like those we're talking to here in the UAE? Yeah. I mean, it, this is really straightforward. Uh, the reason we're building data, uh, data centers is customer demand. Yeah. And we want to bring the technology into the region. We want to bring OCI to the customer as close as the customer needs it to their applications, their data, uh, and to their compliance requirements. So the public regions are spreading like wildfire, right. including in the Middle East and, and right. Africa. And uh, also the, the dedicated regions, uh, the alloy concept, um, we're deploying these now uh, all across uh, the Middle East, including uh, here in the UAE. How will this address their uh, data sovereignty needs? Well, they have complete control over their data. That, that yeah. we, we, we're bringing the cloud to them, and they can keep everything within the, the boundaries of their own data center and with their own governance. That's great. Well, Greg, I so appreciate it. Uh, congratulations on an awesome Cloud World tour here in Dubai, and we look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks. Good to see you again.